We're in black, aren't we? Yeah, we're in black. We we're like splashes of like <laughs> <laughs> moments. <laughs> When do you put the superstar filter on us? When does the, yeah, exactly. the finish superstar? When <laughs> <laughs> the superstar filter? <laughs> I'm, good. I'm good, man. So, Gavin, thanks for coming down, man. How are you? Thank, nice to see you. Of course, my pleasure. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to start like near the beginning. I know you you grew up in London, right? Oh yeah, that beginning. That beginning. I thought I'm in the beginning of Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> this is your podcast. <laughs> Don't want to know about me. Let's go back to Marvin. No, so I want to know about Marvin you, man. Begin? Oh, uh, London. Born and bred like North London. You can either be like two schools. You can either be that, that one who, who sort of, you grew up in a tiny mining village on the edge of nowhere mm -hmm. and uh, you make something of yourself or you grow up in, and, and you have to experience things like... Um, from a distance or you grow up in the center in the belly of the beast do you know what I mean and like exactly. I'm really purely from from London I mean I when I was going out and stuff like I could uh go out to clubs and when I was a kid and a couple of times we could walk home you know for the center of London because like you know didn't have much money so that's how it goes but yeah London born and bred that's like what goes. what kind of music and what kind of bands were you listening to the whole punk explosion was massive for me you know as a um a, a teenager and um so that was the kind of revolution of music. And that's when I realized the revolutionary side to it. And um, so that was just like meant to just love the punk bands. So when I was, you know, a, a, you know, really young, you'd have uh, all the punk bands and you're allowed to like the reggae bands. So we'd go to in the West London where the dance hall stuff, um, sound systems, Notting Hill Carnival. So, you know, I really grew up with that whole kind of culture, dub culture. That um, Powys Terrace, the Glabrick Grove, uh, Portobello Road, that was where my best uh, friend Sasha lived. So we just would, that was our area, All Saints Road. That melting pot of stuff is like what I realized is just so rich because when you, they, you know, you take it in your stride when you're growing up. But I realize now that, that music, fashion, um, you know, art, photography, painting, uh, film, just stuff like that, you know, really a lot of stuff going on there. Absolutely. Like I always looked at London as sort of my North Star for the music that I liked. You know, it's it's amazing that you got a chance to grow up there. I, I grew up in a small town and had to get to a big town to do right. what I wanted You're to You're the do. success story from the other perspective, <laughs> right? Different, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All valuable, all good ways in, but but I was really lucky for that. Um and it's only, you know, it's so funny because people now, you know, progressive values of like LGBTQ rights um uh human rights um racism these are all things that clash was singing about x-ray specs yeah was my favorite band probably one of my favorite bands growing up they were really connected i come and if you think of it now x-ray specs has songs like genetic engineering it's the things that wow. we're doing now and in a punk band with a saxophone and uh great tunes and great bands so um that was a really fertile and then after that it was the post-punk stuff you know joy division and new order gang of four that's where it started to lean more into the um more guitar stuff i really like the guitar because it's really like emphatic and the only problem i had with a lot of um english music around the time when i was you know starting everything was it just all a bit sort of um wasn't the central thing i liked hendrix i like his guitar being on fire mm -hmm. uh, i like seeing you know, I'd like seeing those kind of those post punk bands for American post punk bands, Fugazi, uh, the Jesus Lizard, uh, Big Black, Shellac. And they just, um, the guitar was like a weapon. It wasn't like a sort of a means to sing your chorus, mm -hmm. a support for your, your chorus line. It was like the weapon. And um, I, I, really gravitate towards that so that's the sort of that's the where you know my own aesthetic of like you know pummeling guitars which seems to get even louder as i get older <laughs> yeah and more fun <laughs> i just like fuck it i just love doing the opposite of what you the, any rules or, or or any template tells you you're meant to do you should like run in the other direction you know everyone's shouting you whisper you know that's i always I, mean. I always think of the guitar as being a holy instrument yeah it's 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 i suppose it's it's quite you know it literally well it's sexual because it works same thing for for any gender 
Mm -hmm. Ooh, swept through that 2023 <laughs> minefield like a pro. <laughs> Straight out the other side. <laughs> like those weird game shows where you'll never get to the other side. I totally got to the other side on that one. So um, did, you, did you just get back from tour right now? I just feel I'm about to leave. I don't know what's going on with my life. They seem to be like doing so much that it's it's brilliant. It's just like really electric. I mean, I just came now, you know, you really kindly had me in Marvin and the big feature on Sea of Sound. I've just been spent all morning at fabric shopping. Awesome. Uh, choosing between three or four uh, places, really great artisan, beautiful little like hidden away studios. You don't know if you're going to get like mugged, get crack or you're going to go fabric shopping turn out i just did fabric shopping today <laughs> and they went in and you go in these like mad buildings like a sort of a you know like a yeah these downtown madnesses and uh in between the sort of the uh temporary structures the tents and the homeless people and then behind the door you get this like i just was finding beautiful japanese yarn and great plaids that you i know would really love amazing yeah so didn't you i'm leaving about to i just came out from tour last week the idea was this summer was not going to go on tour like everyone else so we're just going to do weekend warrior stuff and go every thursday or friday play two or three shows and come home mm -hmm. but then they realize it makes it really dumb because you'd like lose all the money you make on the weekend by keeping everything <laughs> going on tuesday and wednesday so i've been away a lot it feels i'm about to go away again next week and then I've got a, a few days in New York. I'm actually shooting with Santi Durazio. Oh, wow. Isn't he so amazing, that guy? Yeah. I've just like coerced him into it. I've just cornered him for so long. And no, I'm going into town. So I know that you'd, you'd appreciate his work. But um, so I'm about to I go. I think he out. shot for one of my magazines. I think he might have shot for Nylon. But yeah. Yeah. He, because I'm spinning, as you know really well, I'm spinning between um, the music and the fashion and there's some other thing that i've been working on for some time that's starting to um um sort of rise and i it was a third part of my um it was the tv show of this interview show that i've been telling everyone i'm going to make for years and like like every other uh, haven't quite got it yet made everyone loves it apart from people who commission it it seems so right. we just so we've got to get over that hump which apparently we're nearly over that hump um it's a cooking show right yeah well it's an interview show just right. like cook i just look at ways to like to stay home more be with my boys <laughs> and i thought if i do a clothing line i love clothes I always love clothes and if i cook and ask someone interesting questions i really like doing that yeah so i was like that was my really basic in you know unplanned plan and uh now it's all sort of it's like guard, it, it, good weeds or gardens grown in a good way, mm -hmm. but they're all starting to like take each other's light a little bit. You know, I was like, anyway, it's it's really good. But so I am going back on tour. But it's like I just came off of tour. Did you did you just put out a new collection for Sea of Sound? Yeah. Well, we did this sort of. Yeah, I went. I put it a large seven or eight collections together, like drops. And now because I'm going to go to Paris for the menswear to. Apparently, apparently, what I, I'm missing the missing link since I last saw you was a, a salesperson, someone to sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a really important. Did you part. find somebody? Yeah, yeah. We've just found someone here and in and in England, uh, and that was a necessary thing. It takes a while to find the right person and the right fit and the right energy that they're available. You know, hardest thing about hiring people is you want the best, but then if they're available, you say, well, "How come they're available?" <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth with anything, right? <laughs> I don't like your availability, but um, Quentin Crisp called it the charm is the ability uh, to influence without the use of logic. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've been exercising that a little bit, like just uh, to entice people on board in this small but growing company. So the guy in England told me I have to do fall winter, which is fantastic. I really found out that I'm really good at spending money and yeah. can like get really great fabrics. So I chose a great cashmere, lovely mohair. I was like in the knitting factory. There's only one knitting factory in LA. Did you know that? No, I didn't. And know only that. one leather place. No, there's more. There's more. Really? Absolutely. Everyone lies to me. Yeah. They're everyone, lying to you. Everyone lies to me. It's sad. A lot of stuff. Sad. I'm like in a fashion. Yeah. I mean, really, only one leather. Why was I just told that 15 minutes ago? I was like, don't say anything. I mean, maybe there's like the most amazing place. Here. Oh no, we it was actually um, I, we make knives. They're you know real knives. So the, the first installment of this knife's life is to be in a box, really 
indiscriminate box with descriptions of the, the packaging of the knife but it looks really crappy and the way it lies in you can't print the sea of sound so anyway i want like much more arsenal so i was getting the leather to wrap and make these um you know knife bundles oh, that's so because cool. that's what chefs you know they they roll mm -hmm. out and they you put a space we'll have space for like four knives and then put the one knife in the middle and wrap it and it got this black leather worn leather with red on the other side so it's going to be super nice super uh it's gonna be great awesome did you um are you gonna do denim it was suggested the fashion is so funny because it's bad enough in music right because you straddle both worlds yeah but it's bad enough in music that everyone's like i either like that song or i don't as far as it goes but in fashion everyone everyone well i would have put a the stripe there or i would have put a dot in that bit like anyone could really do it yeah it's like it's it's just whether it's the taste thing it's like that that beautiful definition of modern art like uh i could have done that plus but i didn't exactly Exactly. so you got to take on board people's opinions all the time even more so than music mm -hmm. music they're a little bit more either they're going to love it or you're know, not really going to give you like right over pointers because in it, with music it's an instinct and you have to as a as someone who makes music i have to i've gotten used to um people uh, interpreting what they're saying do you know what i mean like not i don't expect them to tell me exactly what they mean when they say speed the tempo up it doesn't actually mean the speed the tempo it means it probably drags at that point you can't actually you wouldn't normally change the actual tempo but mm -hmm. people use that as a phrase to describe a feeling um in a certain area that you can i can solve without affecting the tempo but it will seem like i did last time we talked you told me that you do most of the production right well, I mean, I'm just You've very got a very clear vision of where you want to go. Yeah, I mean, most of the time I feel clear how it should be, but I'm also at the same time simultaneously parallel, lucky with I got amazing people that I work with. So no matter where I think it is, you know, they'll bring great stuff in. So there's always I, I like that idea of bringing it there and just letting it be. And I know how it could resolve, but I'm always just leave it open and just see where it could go now there are sometimes where it goes places that people might leave and it might be you know <laughs> step back step back step back uh in the process but oftentimes um you find things that are amazing so no i'm, I'm lucky because i've had the same people forever so it's almost like we all have a similar language so whatever the whatever the conversation is required per song it will get that attention and so i just you know quite hands-on as as you should be. I miss my life. So course, it's like yeah. uh, my life depends on it. So I got to get it right, in my opinion. You know? No, I mean, you've achieved a certain status in music. And as want... have the people I've worked with. So that's the good news. It's not like yeah. I'm not alone. And it's been great. You know, I'm in sort of a run with, um, with these last records of the last few years. I felt clear as to what the aesthetic should be. Because that's really the hardest thing, I think, about anything you do, right? Anything sure. you make, it, what, you need to just find your aesthetic. And it's funny because um, in doing Sea of Sound, I've had to really check myself and think about what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What is what is really happening? And I, and I realized that it's this it's this great desire to, to share, you know, a life well lived and through great experiences and great people I've been around. It's just there's something magical about curating things, about making things. I love it when I make a record that people love. It's mm -hmm. just the best feeling, you know? Or making a shirt. I've been making shirts. People put it on that. I love that. It's so great. And I and I feel that um, it, it's so important when close to em embolden and empower people. Not to be, It's not vanity. It's just sort of, it's your daily fist fight against the world because the world is out to get you you know not you personally but right. it's a difficult world for all of us so um you know i just think it's a really integral part uh for me to just want to look and feel 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 really good and 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 somehow see of sound and the records i make and whether i make a knife or a shirt or write a song it doesn't really matter it's a sort of my sensibility that people some people tune into and some people don't and some people don't know about and that's life yeah i think that's what makes a great artist is being able to channel your own right personality or dna into whatever you're creating for sure for sure and seeing the importance of that and the stories of things it's funny because i never you know everything needs a story everything needs context um and it's what you know people are i feel that people 
really respond well to great curation. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. I mean, you, you're an editor. You know that more than anyone. So it's like, that's what it is, isn't it? Right. It's like you choose what is going to um, kind of elevate or interest or intrigue anyone that wants to get anything that you're making, right? Totally. How's your clothing going? It's going good. Um, selling in Japan right now, and um, we're looking at launching it properly here. But again, like it's certain people that I've found harder to get, like sales person. Right. You yeah. Know, that the people that written the adults. Of yeah. The business. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I've got loads of people in like cool leather jackets and like you know look fantastic <laughs> around a creative table. <laughs> it's going to be sick. Obsessed with this piece. Well, yeah. Yeah. Can you obsess about getting on to buy it? But that's cool that you're going to Paris. <laughs> I have used it before, so I apologize if anyone's heard it. Me say it, in, in, but that whole adage that Tom Waits, you know, the way you do anything is the way you do everything, and so. I'm fucked because I'm sort of too far down. It's like I'm cave dwelling. Mm -hmm. It's like the end or the, I'm still, I'm so in the middle. I can't possibly turn around and go back. This is not in my nature. I'm like Scottish. I'm McGregor. It's Gavin McGregor. I'm a McGregor. I'm a real fighter. So I was like, I have to, f oh shit, I got to keep going. <laughs> and there's no point in keep going if you don't do it like, here and in Europe, and Paris is apparently the best place for menswear, which I found out by being in, in a different show. I went to Vegas and was at a convention. Yeah. And it was learning. like magic or project. Yeah, exactly. Project. Yeah. 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 So I just um, was there for a few days, like being a salesman and hanging out and through a dinner for the project people and um, learned a lot, met some great people. And um, actually, I met one of the people that I met, um, I think, is the person that will help me launch in Europe and the rest of the world. So Amazing. I said to him, if he's the, if I get him from mm -hmm. the show, the show is hundred percent worth it. You know, yeah, that's for how sure. I got him and he's from London. He's like a you know, nice man from London. So you're an actor as well. I know you were in Constantine and you were in Bling Ring. How do you, how do you feel about that side of your life? I love it so much. I mean, they just was like, finally, they're going to make Constantine 2. And I was so excited about that. And I even did the, I read about people doing this. I've never been that pushy. I'm English, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I was like, I'm not that pushy. But I was like, you know what? I want to be in that fucking movie. So I wrote uh, Francis Lawrence, the director, and Akiva Goldsman, the, the writer. and was like, I just want you to know that was like, a, like total career high, one of my super highlights of my life. And I just really want to pledge allegiance to the the flag of Constantine and let you know that you know I'm here if you need. Um, and uh, and then there's the writer's strike and the actor's strike, I so I don't know what's happening there, but um, it'd be fantastic to be there. I love it. You know, I think it's so magical the way that um, actors can take words, you know, great words written by great writers but how they can elevate them and just make them dance and just mm -hmm. sing. And you would sit, I've read with uh, or acted with amazing people who just like, you can be, just got to be in awe. I mean, you have to act, so you can't act in awe, but inside, internally, you can be in awe of the the feeling of, of that reality of that sort of, it's like, like, I don't know, like water skiing or something where you're planing perfectly on the water of reality, involvement, you know, there's no, there's no fakery. Doesn't it, in that moment and that connection, which is what acting is, is where, uh, two or any number of people are sort of creating a scene that feels very, very real. And, you know, for some reason I get a real kick out of that. I just love it. What I first liked about it was someone else thought of the words, you know, exactly, from doing music, yeah. was like, okay, now I've got a blank slate. All right, I've got bands that inspired me, but essentially you have a blank play, uh, slate. And and with uh, movies, you take, hopefully, you know, when I read Akiva's for, for, for Constantine, how I got that movie, he said to my uh, manager at the time that when I said the words, that's how he'd written them. Wow. You know, and it just happened that I interpreted them in a way that triggered, you know, that's so hard with acting. You know, you can do it. I, I tried out for a bunch of things recently, did some auditions, and I, I was like, I didn't get them. They're really good shows. In therapy, the, the one with um, Gabriel Byrne in oh, therapy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a really good one. 
I really tried and I did it with an actor and made it really, and I felt that I did the best I could do, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just like, I let it go where I go, well, I'm just not the right person. It's not like I did it and screwed up, wasn't believable, I was a jerk. It's just maybe they wanted me like someone with like, you know, blonde curly hair or blonde straight, you know, I don't, I don't right. know. I just wasn't, didn't suit it. But I think it's a magical profession. It's just so fun when you work with people that, that make it happen. And the last thing I did with was Bella Thorne Forum Habit, just as the just as the pandemic. So I haven't done anything for a couple of years, but there hasn't been anything. But like she's amazing. For example, she's been acting since she was a, a, a you know she's a child actress, so ten fifteen years of experience, and just the uh, the energy around her, you know. You know, it's like great actors or great people on stage. They just, you know, like a, like a break dancer. You create this energy around you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're Iggy Pop or if you're the best, you know, beatbox dancer. You just create this aura, this sort of cyclone of performance. And uh, so I love that. And so I love that in music. And I get to do my own sort of thing. And in uh, in acting, it's, it's, it's really fun. You said that you were in awe of some of the actors that you've, worked with mm -hmm. like who in particular i really like with jaiman honsu um uh, keanu was was pretty spectacular i i tried out four times for the good shepherd and that was a movie that de niro did and uh, i did I, I got the in, east east coast casting i got through it west coast casting got through it read for de niro uh, in his trailer when i was meet <laughs> the fuckers got through it and then i read with leo wow and um in london so i did four auditions for it and i thought man if de niro casts me that is it because if you can't not cast me if de niro casts me of course you're yeah. an idiot if you you know if he could see what you can't so i was thinking oh my god i'm gonna that's it and he dropped out and um, matt damon came in and that was Billy Crudup took my part, and they all it all changed. The supporting cast went away like a hair down a drain. <laughs> I was fucked. I was not in a commanding position on that one. My leverage was at a low. <laughs> but I did. I did um, have a nice moment. Um, I was once in New York with all of um, what's that the Scar Band out of Anaheim. Yeah. That's Garvin. Not, not, no doubt. <laughs> Indeed, that band. And we <laughs> sat there, and Joe Pesci was at the other table behind us, and they met him or something like this. They turned around and uh, stood up, both tables stood up, everyone said hello, and they knew him, and, and De Niro was there. And um, they all got introduced to him, and he goes to me, Hey, Gavin, how you doing? Good to see you again. Shook That's my hand. Cool. And told Pesci I was a really good actor. Wow. Kid's a really good actor, but. A bit like my cooking show, it doesn't matter yet because <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on the kind of you know on the other side of it, which is to get it get, to get to the next movie. Can't but, you just do do one cooking show and just like make it real? Well, I've shot two of them. Actually. Oh, you have. I have okay, shot two yeah, episodes. Yeah. I shot two episodes. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I shot two. I'll send it to you later. Love to see it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. You could commission it, except you're not a fucking commissioner for make TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> I could count yeah, on I'm you. In, I could actually count on you to to you'd commission it if you had the power. I'd send it to you, and you would commission it. But um, it's also like I I don't have much spirituality in my life, but you, I do have a Buddhist Buddhist sensibility. Mm -hmm. So I do really believe in the concept of when things are at the right time, and things are always nothing without a reason. And uh, things come when they're meant to, to, to come, and there's, there's no rushing that. You can you just can't accelerate the universe. Good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. truth in that. Mm -hmm. So you and I are big graphic design fans, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I didn't realize that you had Von Oliver design one of your sleeves. Yeah. See, I'm I'm like a I'm like a. I'm an unknown quotient, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like an onion. I'm like a, an onion with a guitar. <laughs> you know, Vaughn did a magazine for me. Right. He's beautiful. He's amazing. Great man. Yeah. Great artist. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was my dream. Uh, and that was the, the biggest thing that I lamented and when the kind of, I know there's been a resurgence in vinyl and all that stuff. And I do believe in it, but I don't believe in it. 
like yeah. I don't believe in resurgences of anything really. So sort of, I'm not sure it's so hard to get people to care. But I do, obviously, pe more vinyl is being printed than ever. So, and I love making records. But the reason why I love vinyls the most is because always the artwork, of course, and the experience of the artwork. It was like a, it was like a, that was my religion. That was my experience of someone whose sensibility, whose life brain I bought into. You know, whether it's Joni Mitchell or Dylan or or um, you know. I don't know, PJ Harvey. You just believe in those people. So you're gonna I did some new work. Let me let me hear it. So then the the artwork was just such a great piece of it. And I always, because um I don't know, I would always love seeing the thank you section. Mm -hmm. That was the fun bit. Oh my god, my favorite band or my favorite person. Who gets to, who's the luckiest person like it? Do I know anyone? What's the degrees of separation? It's like my whole life, sorry. None. No separate, no degrees of separation. <laughs> you don't know anyone that knows you. You will never know anyone fun. I was like, oh, so annoying. So I love that. So yes, uh, the artwork was massive to me. It still is. I mean, you know, through you, um, when we met and you were, you were telling me more about the history of Ray Gun and of course my history with Dave Carson mm -hmm. and he did the first um, uh, album artwork and uh, so it's pretty good you know that into Vaughn Oliver you know it's pretty spectacular and um, now you're working with Chris Ashworth and Chris Ashworth who I've got to say it was interesting because when you first introduced us of course I totally his, his aesthetic is, is sick and I love everything that he does um it was like it wasn't the right time for him. He had some other commitments and he was traveling. Mm -hmm. But I was so thrilled to like have a small chat with him and so respectful of him that I was like, yeah, no, totally. I totally understand that. Because we said, let's do something. And then it, he had some some issues to deal with. It's completely legit. And um, I think it was funny because I think it's because I was so laid back and cool about it and totally understood even though we thought there was a deadline i was like no you, you go do that that i think it surprised him and maybe on the way over on the plane he thought you know maybe i've got a couple of evenings i could try that out <laughs> yeah so then we got back into it so he contacted me again actually i think i yeah things have calmed down a bit i think it could be all right i was like wow brilliant and uh, we had such a um easy positive backwards and forwards at first it was like i'm not going to tell him anything because i want him to do his own thing and then he did his thing. It was cool, but I was like, well, this is what I would think, to be honest, but I didn't want to preempt anything mm -hmm. from him. I didn't mind commenting if he asked me, but I didn't want to be like, you know, do it in the shape of a guitar on fire or something. I didn't want to like lead it too much. Right. I wanted him to lead it. And uh, he, so with options, and we just, and I honed in on something that gave me a sensibility. It actually began with a color, but a color that fit a thing. So it just, he kick-started the whole thing with me. But then, um, pushed me into the kind of well i was in the back seat with him but not annoyingly right you know right, right, every now right, and again right. he'd say what do you think and i mean like, and he'd go and do that and so it's a really really easy process um which is often the sign that it's a good collaboration because it's just sort of hopefully getting the most out of each other and he you know he wanted to have a bit of my aesthetic in of my the desire of my aesthetic in there because obviously it's sort of reasonably infinite you know for sure is the, is the artwork done yeah when he didn't send it to you I thought he would totally send it to you. I thought it was you like because we might have, he might have. Yeah, I thought actually, because yeah. uh, that was the. I thought that was the protocol. I, I didn't know I the protocol. He, I thought he sent me something artwork early, protocol. Maybe. But artwork I thought protocol. it was awesome. Whatever I saw, it's beautiful cover. Yeah. Beautiful cover. It's really. It's it's and it's and it really stands out. My my thing is like how I think of words. How it's, it's, it, as I say, it goes through everything. It's like the same. If you come to my house, uh, the paintings that I like that I choose for my wall are going to have a similar effect or you know they they, they elicit a different uh, something strong you know the opposite of decorative art right it's really loud and and talkative like all my covers uh, all our covers of the bush there's only been one dud because we're just on the e when 9 11 happened um we had the cover of a silhouette of a plane mm. and it was a beautiful cover it was such a great cover because my whole life was then centered around um, flying backwards, flying everywhere around the world. So it was a completely fitting image. And uh, so we rushed to do it and we, we ended up just doing just a simple gold cover, which looked like we lacked a little imagination with it. Um, and I was also, that was when I was, had my first, I had a terrible time at Atlantic. So that was the only time where I was at a label where they would, it was accountants and, you know, being uh, 
counters. So it wasn't about finding great artists. There was a, I used the in-house guy, Martin O'Gaultier, who was a nice enough guy, but he didn't have the, the cachet or the history or the, the depth of vision of any of these people I've worked with, you know, so that was a bit, that was the one cover, but it, yeah, I would say we did actually have a really great cover coming. It's a beautiful cover. You can Google it. It's pretty cool. I can't wait. It to seemed see it. insensitive at the time. And so the greatest hits comes out in November or mm, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Loaded. It's called. And, uh, it's fun. I never wanted to do that because I always thought it was a bit of a swan song. And now I realize that I get everything wrong anyway. So that's bullshit. And who cares? It's a place to have all the songs. I don't know. You know, yeah. it's just is what it is. And, um, how many songs are in it? Oh, it's way too many, like 22 or something. There's like 25 songs that category, you know, or top 40 songs. So you'd have 25 on there, but we only had 22 because of the size of the vinyl you're printing or whatever, whatever, whatever. Does it, is that count as a, as a two? I think it's a double disc. Double, yeah. Yeah, it's a double disc for that. So we, again, it allows the artwork. It's all about the artwork because the songs are the songs and people can access them. And, you know, I know the specialists are going to kill me. They lose something or other in there. But unless you have really expensive vinyl equipment, I mean, generally, you know, if you have a nice set of speakers, you know, mm -hmm. the volume, you know, driving in your car is weird. People say car tests, but it's like the bass is down by your feet and the, the, the voices are here. It's a weird thing that we... People always because you've got to listen to it in places where people will hear the music. So I I love the car test. I I think that um, what's where you listen to it so much. Yeah, right? and it's also like when you're in the car, it's almost like you're in the music. Right. You know, it's all around you, and yeah, it's it's a different feeling. I sometimes think about that with um singing and music. That it's a funny concept that to make things that go between people's ears, headphones. It's like yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it'd be such a great benign revenge, but make people that really hate you um, sit with the headphones of your music on. <laughs> Just to fuck them. <laughs> it's so good. I hate that band. You know, just, just like four records back to back, not even longer than two, the, the length of two Springsteen shows. <laughs> really fuck them up. Have you ever been to a Springsteen show? I haven't. I, don't, I haven't had time yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been no i haven't i mean i no i sort of feel like i have because I, i've seen that you yeah. know that that thing um i think he's incredible my favorite thing about him is the confession in those incredible i didn't also didn't see those shows either in broadway but how he did the stories and he's a great storyteller of course i've seen lots of videos of the stories are longer than the songs you know mm -hmm. and he just plays a bit of me um uh, but um he he uh when he did those broadway sessions he's like you know he never worked in a factory he never did that it's like this guy with this this sort of like north richmond you know virginia man or whatever the number one record in the country and right everyone like you know the far right is taken as the working man and the whatever you know, whatever's going on with it um i just you know it was fictitious he could see it, it didn't it doesn't matter Sure. Doesn't sure, make sure. any difference. He still, those are still, um, he had enough empathy and enough insight that uh, it's still, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a brave admission because he's like, well, my entire persona is fictitious or my, my subjects of, you know, sort of things imagined, not things, not Bukowski. Mm -hmm. right? right. I mean, didn't yeah. live a lot of it. No, but I mean, I got to put not be out of context. It doesn't matter. No, I it's mean just he's, he's create, phenomenal. His creativity is incredible. I, Those, I would like to go to a concert, but I, I so haven't. I. Yeah. So would I. Yeah. Maybe That's, we'll go next yeah, time he's around. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe we'll sneak out after about two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep popping to the bar. <laughs> the person I love, really been impressed with recently in this art culture is Taylor Swift. That's I amazing. have been blown oh away God. by her. So I fell in love with her when Kanye took the mic from her. Mm -hmm. Like I always, as soon as yeah. it happened, I was just fucking hated that moment. And I always loved her from then, just because of that, because there she was, this really talented, beautiful girl, getting her moment. And uh, it was taken away from her. I was actually playing in Nashville when um, 
she was on the, uh, luckily the following night so i don't think we've got a conflicting audience <laughs> so i'm all right there but i wouldn't mind some of our audience it was like basically every woman in the state was there it was just the most powerful i've never seen um somebody you know i toured with you too i was like i've toured with bowie mm -hmm. but something about being in nashville and seeing that most people apart from the shopkeepers and the baristas were there because of Taylor Swift. And when you see all that footage of her fans outside the stadium, people can't get in. The bigger crowds outside her stadium than the rest of us paupers would 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 be like, oh, let's go on tour for those people, <laughs> right? <laughs> they can't even get into a show and they're still there and they're still singing the songs. And so I've never known an artist who's spoken more consistently and more directly with their audience, you know? It's just phenomenal. I mean, didn't she, she did like five or six nights at SoFi here? Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just a That's cultural a phenomenon of, of like, of just being a, that good at writing a lyric. You know, when I write a lyric and people connect to it, which happens to me a lot, not on that level, but it happens to me a lot. It's a beautiful thing. And with mine, you know, some of the, half of the time, half of the time, you know, what was that bit about? But with hers, they seem to be, um, they just, it's so plaintive. Um, because they, they have such release when all these people singing these beautiful songs. And I just think it's just so powerful. And it's so in this sort of cynical world. And I don't know, she's just been a phenomenal story. She is a phenomenal story. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, how was it to work with uh, Sofia Coppola? Oh my God, an effortless breeze. Oh my gosh, she's just the greatest. Like, so she just asked me to come in and talk to her and she sent me the script and offered me the role which is you know feels great it's like someone telling you you look fantastic like every night for a year <laughs> you know what <laughs> i mean you just feel so <laughs> oh thanks you know there's sofia coppola that, that's pretty crazy and um i went to a meeting down and i uh, went for a fitting down in wilshire uh, where her offices were at the time and when i walked in just everyone just cool as fuck like I don't know what it is, Upper East Side, uh, Lower East Side, Brooklyn, just cool, laid back, hipster New mm -hmm. Yorkers. Every, anyone you, you would chat to, they're on a fun journey, going to do something interesting in some department that's really cool. And so you just walk in, you know, you just feel like you've landed in sort of hip Xanadu. Just mm -hmm. felt like a vibe. I mean, I don't mean that disparaging. I mean, like really like epicenter of creativity and good energy and, and, um, like all the best talented people sort of not stuck up about it and not mm -hmm. sort of, you know, so she's just really unassuming and um, is one of those directors. Cause I've worked with, I don't know, six or seven now. And what her style is a sort of had a suggestive and encouraging, but a, just a warm sense of direction leading you in a certain direction. I mean, I didn't get to play big enough, long enough part with her and I'd love to do any more with her, but yeah, so she was just really just as classy as you'd want her to be. Like, mm -hmm. you'd be so sad if she wasn't. Like, she's something great and more. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, she's got, like, extreme cool value. Oh, my God. She's yeah. just, like, she's so cool. I love her. So you're about to play an anti-gun violence show. Mm. Can you tell yes. me a little bit about that and why you're doing it? This this charity that we've uh, aligned with, I need to, you, you'll need to tell your listeners the right name of it, but it's, artists against the gun alliance i think i apologize I didn't look today um but it doesn't make sense to me you know um as a father it's just not rational um that your kids can go to school and they they might get shot and the the frequency <laughs> It's, just, it's sort of like you feel like you're making a mistake. You, someone's got to be screwing up on the numbers. You know, 200, 250 school shootings this year. It's just like, you can't, the, the, the kind of breakdowns within society that go into that, the issues with mental health, the issues with um, bullying, the issues with education, with um, overpopulation of classes so people may not be seeing um, the... The, the dilemmas people going through so you know you have you have shootings and you have suicides and so with the young people and um 
So it's something that's really important. We are asked, to, you know, it's most of the time we're sort of selfish and doing things for ourselves and our own furthering of what we're doing and try and get a further leg up. Can we play to more people? Where can we go? And so to do something where you uh, get to play and you get to be part of a, God, I sound cliched, but <laughs> get to be part of a conversation about something that really needs addressing because it seems to be um, an issue that splits the entire entire country. And um, I think it's as much about access to guns personally as it is to mental health um, and um, finding out like why, what is happening? What the fuck is happening? That this is the remedy. People feeling so bad, so ostracized, so not listened to that they um, develop these sort of psychotic personalities. And, um, you know, in a, in a, in a utopian world of support, even of more support than not, you know, you can't ever get it complete, but you do get the sense that, um, people are just, uh, have just, uh, lost their minds and it's just despairing because I can't get my head around why someone would do that. I mean, it takes a lot to kill someone really. Oh. I don't think most people, I don't know. I mean, I definitely know I couldn't do it unless someone was attacking us now, then I'm, mcgregor for us but it's such a wild thing to do like you've you've been not listened to for so long how many times have you not been listened to to get to that point in your life that's a lot of rejection there needs to be this kind of multi-pronged um approach to it doesn't there where it's it's like the why is that is often a really good question i used to ask that when i was a kid apparently my mum and my sister like annoy the shit out of them because everything was why which i thought was a perfectly valid question when you're young of course why it's brilliant <laughs> everything <laughs> shut up with the why and stop whistling as well do you have brothers and sisters i have two sisters are they older or younger i have a older sister and younger sister and do they live in england yeah they live in england yeah are you close with them i am actually and as time goes on even more close yeah i'm really yeah, I just, they're all I got, you know, I don't have a dad, um, my, I have my mom still alive, but it's a nice thing, and you know, it's it's fun, I feel like, for a long time, I wasn't wasn't the black sheep, I was just the sort of the, what would you say, the financial black sheep, I was just like, oh, poor Gavin, you know, he's trying, trying to <laughs> sing, he's going to sing his song, so I was always like the uh, the one kind of like, always borrowing a fiver off of everyone, and like, you know, <laughs> just... And then, so then, when I, when I began to sell records, it, it was really fun to assume the the other role and be like the patriarch, you know, mm -hmm. being the sort of you know, I have my mom and I have my sisters and I have her kid, they're all their kids, and so I feel quite centered in that and there to um, be the patriarch for our family. So it's a it's a it's beautiful when I have my kids. So it's just like that. I'm just having to be a fun patriarch. Tell me about your fall tour. Oh, the full tour is just uh, yet another run around the the, the country. Uh, three three and a half weeks. Are you, is it headline or are you? Oh yeah, we're headline. Sorry, I was trying to think of like what is it that would differentiate from the last tour or what I'm doing next week. <laughs> Not a lot, <laughs> just stuff. So it's just us going out on tour and I suppose playing more hits because sometimes I like to play a lot of the newer material and find a balance between that. Um, because like every um, self-conscious artist. I don't want to sort of be too retrogressive and I sure. want to be like, but I'm making records now, you know? Um, so I, I don't know, just find that balance. I'm going to try and make it special, but nothing any different from the special. I would always try and make it, um, a couple of new songs we haven't played. We, we including come together, the, the Beatles track we'd played it or used to play it a while ago, many years ago. And then we haven't been playing that. So I suppose that's on there. So we should be what, playing. What that. makes you connect with that song? Well, you know, ironically, at the time we just found a really good detune. Um, Chris made a really good a guitar player. He made a really nice detuned version of it. Mm. And at the time, we were still um, playing a lot of stuff in standard tuning. I mean, you're a guitar player, so yeah. you understand. So I don't want to lose your audience. So I'll be quick here. <laughs> but the last couple of years, I've, I've as the music got heavier, I've detuned and make it a, a, a much heavier sound. And um, I don't really write. I haven't written a standard now for a few years, and I don't really plan to. Um, when we would choose these big festivals um, to play, and sometimes we'd be playing with really heavier bands, because the performance quite heavy, 
I'd sometimes be going through the records and some records would have some detuned songs on them. So I'd choose three or four songs scattered across the records. I would and play these four detuned songs in a row because this is a this is like Slipknot's audience, you know. Of I need course, to yeah. need to step it up. And uh, I can't be so sad. And um Come Together was just an opportunity to have another song that we put in a detuned form and could go with the other more standard song. Mm -hmm. And now ironically all the last two records uh, two and a half records are all detuned, so you could, I could choose any one of those songs. They're all pretty heavy. Even the ones that are mellow are written with detuned. Uh, are you a Beatles person? Yeah. Did you watch that documentary? That uh, yeah, Rick Rubin. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Rick Rubin and Paul McCartney. No, that's different. One I'm talking ah. about the uh, the one that um, I'm spacing on the director of uh, Oh Scorsese. Did you, did Scorsese do it? No, who did it? What is it? Yeah, it's a famous one. It's, it's a famous. Yeah, yeah. Peter Jackson, right? right. I haven't seen them. That's oh why I keep God. blanking. It. It's like all this intimate moments, like when they're recording "Let It Be" and whatnot. Yeah, well, I have seen that. So I have seen that. Excuse me. Yes, with yeah. Yoko in there and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah beautiful. That's that incredible. So intimate. It was pretty yeah. amazing. Actually. I love all. Yes, they're, they're just un unbelievable, unbelievable band. And all in eight years. Yeah. Fuck them. Crazy. I use that as a real benchmark or bench, yeah, benchmark to be like, you know, because there's too many songs in the world, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, why write songs? Too many songs in the world. There's never any enough great songs. So the noble thing is to keep continuing to write the great songs. And then the other one to always keep a real good, humble roof over your head as a songwriter is to be like, well, until you've written anything like any one of the songs they've written, you haven't really, haven't really begun, really. So I hold them in such high esteem that it's just like, it'd be impossible to ever reach that. So it would sustain me as a songwriter because it's just, it's an, it's a endless distance away i that, mean you probably that. reach certain people with some of your hits that yeah some of the songs but just way. the way just certain things i just know sometimes you just got to accept you know certain songs that people have written it's just fantastic whether it's like a you know an incredible um noel gallagher song you know incredible melody or a bono moment there's some songs pink floyd mm -hmm. there's a certain moments people have reached where you're like Whew, that's a that is the Kilimanjaro of songwriting. Did you watch the documentary on Hypnosis, the design company that did all the Pink Floyd record covers? And, no, uh, oh, I would like that. It's you would love it. Mm -hmm. um, Anton Corbin directed it. Oh, well, he's it's pretty, quite good. It's pretty awesome. He's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever shot with him? No, and I once had a um, wonderful PR guy. Michael Pagnata, who I still miss. He was really Oh, great. I know Michael Pagnata. And he used to say, <laughs> you haven't been photographed until you've been photographed by Anton. <laughs> so apparently I still haven't been photographed. <laughs> Is he still around, Michael Pagnata? Um, I'm sure somewhere. I don't know. He used to do like prints and yeah. Roberts. He did the cure. Michael, um, George Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's because the guy that I did my first... Um, label with he was george michael's manager so that's how we got the michael bagnata back in the day when like press was happening every day and you'd be rung up and they'd be like i didn't say that that was oh, did, oh you know <laughs> just there's all the ricochets sometimes hard and it's hard now to make a splash unless you're a jerk and get cancelled you know mm -hmm. unless you get the whole hog it's really hard to stay in a sort of a bubbling cauldron-esque thing of like the water cooler because um Life is is just different now, so much more fragmented. I do sometimes. I don't want to be like an old fart, but I do lament that sort of the 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 the, the sort of the um, the highways converging and having like where they had MTV and the radio and the print magazine and NME and you know mm -hmm. you, you, you you know night whatever any of the magazines. Yeah, sure, but it was all happening. Remember those days where it was just like it just sort of felt like people were paying attention more where people are sort of now just self-obsessed and just in their own world of their own curation, you know, going back to, you know, their phones, the algorithm is the sort of computer's uh, 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 curation, isn't it? So people are just locked in their own worlds mm -hmm. and more sequestered and more distant than each other with uh, the anti-social media. It's true. Have you heard any new music that really excited you? um bad omens really just a ridiculous band that i've really been enjoying uh the yeah yeah yeahs 
the new record that's yeah. cool. The Kills, I fantastic. The kills. Yeah, I love them. So that's enough for now. The PJ Harvey I didn't connect to as I've connected to her stuff in the past. You know, she's so esoteric though. It just probably takes a couple of listens. Nick Cave, mm -hmm. just him and Warren Ellis. Yeah, Carnage, amazing. just stupid. It's stupid. Nick Cave is just um. It's boring. I've said too many nice things about him. I need to start figuring out his faults. Have you ever met him? No. But I, I you know, he's just a very um, impressive, creative person. You know, through and through, just that's it. Straight, straight up. I love his, you know, his, the whole aesthetic, the whole the whole thing is, is kind of quite um, electrifying. And, you know, for me, it's, it's also inspiring because he's... Uh, He's ahead of me um, in, in every regard. And um, it gives, you know, so it's, it's like, you know what, just keep being mm -hmm. interesting. He's a perfect example of just, he's just interesting. Yeah, he's always relevant. Because he's interesting and he's not chasing, he's just creative and interesting. And for me, that's what is so alluring about him. And whatever it is, again, it's that thing. It's not, it's like who he is, whether it's mm -hmm. like with a, you know, whoever, whichever permutation of him, you know, I loved his, uh, was it Grinder Man? That was a brilliant, I think he's done two records of that. That was amazing. Just so good. How was it touring with you two? Just like going to a great college class. I never went to college. So I'm a bit of a sort of educational sort of bastard, you know, figured out myself or people mm -hmm. tell me what books to read or, you know what I mean? Self taught in that sense, you know, so I've missed that structured, um, education that I see now as something that why not just three years, you know, studying like, do you know what I mean? Like history of art and so sort of English literature would be fucking amazing. What how brilliant, what, what make you very smart. Um, and so watching you too was a little bit like going to, um, school of, of a sort and just seeing the the connection and the reverence and the, yeah you know just a very impressive outfit of combination of spiritual power and i don't mean like the god thing even though he's obviously the very god oriented but just the way that he can um elevate no pun intended um how he can elevate an audience and uh I had it with Neil Young, you know, seeing him, um, the same quality of like making a big place seem so intimate with just the right connection and the right words, the few words, the, the paused moments, the, mm -hmm. you know, real, like you go see this masterful performer. So it's, that's what I love to do. And I just got to watch them every night and it was like dumb of me to not be on tour watching them every night. Did you get to spend much time with Bono? Yeah, yeah, loads of time. This and that. I've yeah, we, they've, I've sort of known him and Ali for a long time, and um, he's very fun. He's a lot of fun, and uh, a lot of fun to be around. And uh, one of those people that I would never assume that I'm anything special in his life, but it's good to be an acquaintance of his. That uh, sometimes we get to spend time, and mm -hmm. you know, I've been to Airs in France and stayed with him there and stuff like that. So, um, and you know, his, I'm pretty close with Ali, his wife and, yeah. uh, and, you know, watch the whole Eden, the, uh, company. I don't know if it's even still, I don't know if it's it still, is, yeah. but certainly went to a number of shows back in the day and supporting them and got a number of Eden pieces and he was a great family. Um, I don't, I can't, I, when I knew John and Elijah, the sons, when they were young, just, they had these great BB guns, but. Now he's in that great band in Hayla, doing really well. Yeah, I love him. Doing Hayler. fantastic. Um, and the girls are just killing it with uh, charity work and um, acting. So, yeah, it's, they, it's an amazing family. And I, I, I know them a bit. I did a book with you two and it never came out. Oh. It's a bummer. Yeah, they're so democratic. Well, they just out democratized. They no one can make a decision as to who which pictures should no, go. No, it was full, fully authorized, and I spent a lot of time with Bono and whatnot. But um, it was it was around the Pop Mart tour. Oh, right, 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 right. And uh, I had just done a book with Michael Stipe, and I figured if I went to the publisher and said, you know, I'm I'm doing a book with you too, that they would 
Hell go yeah. for it. Yeah. I'd and, buy it. And it was just a different, difficult time for you two commercially at that time. Right. And uh, yeah, I read his book. I made it through his whole book. I read the book. I also listened I to the audio book. He's great. I really enjoyed it. He's awesome, book. man. I didn't realize that he's like, he's always alluded to a lot like he was like this aggressive fighting, you know, like aggressive guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't know him until later on in life, but I didn't ever get the sense of that. But I suppose much like Jordan Peterson says that it's good to have your, have that sort of savage side, side under control. You know, it's not about being meek and mild. It's about keeping hold of any sort of, um, DNA that stretches stretches back through the, through history of like aggression and, and protection and mm. strength and not using it, and I like that idea. So maybe that's what Bono had. But uh, gorgeous. I mean, some of the my favorite songs of all time have been done by them. I would think. And the the concerts are like a religious experience. But that's what I mean. That the, yeah. it just was inspiring to see him lift that many people up like that. And that's all I want to do when I do shows is um is find a way into into just like getting to people's hearts and like change them like you know when i go and watch a show i'm like okay i can't help but analyze it you know this bit is lifting me up this bit i'm bored this bit i like this bit oh that's a good idea this isn't a good idea all the time you just you know for me you're just trying to finesse what you do i think that's what being an artisan is an artist is just to sort of take your chosen medium and just f sharpen it all the time and do the best version of it and like sometimes i go well what is a live performance like what do you want to achieve out of this? like it's now i can't get people don't all want to come to my show and dance around and f bounce and fly across each other so like what can you do like i get so much out of going in the crowd because when i go out in the crowd no matter how big it is I can go to the back of, an, of a shed of like 15, 20,000 people. And when you go back, then you break that fourth wall or is it a third wall? What's the stage wall? Is that third wall? Fourth wall? Third wall. Right there. there. When yeah. you go off the stage, whatever. When you go off the fucking stage um, and you run through the crowd, people just can't. I oh, it's the third wall, isn't it? They can't. What is it? The fourth wall? Fuck it. Yeah, Let's you're call right. it. It's the fourth wall. Yeah, it's the fifth wall. <laughs> it's the fifth <laughs> it's wall. Because you know what? It's a very, very it's a many. It's wall you're not supposed it's to It's many break. walls. <laughs> and, uh, when you get through loads of <laughs> Something wild happens. It's like setting. It's like a fuse goes through the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's like a fuse goes through the crowd. And it's not like I want to do it like a shtick. And I was like, I don't do it again. It's like obvious because it's last night. But yet, when it, you, I can feel that moment of like, I know what to re-engage the audience. We've had now 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Someone's want to go, going to want to go and pee and is offering to get the drinks. You know <laughs> what I mean? What can you do that stops them doing that? What can you do all the time to kind of uh, just keep you thrilling the audience? And people just, they're in another place. They're not just at a venue or in their cars parked 300 meters away and they've mm -hmm. just had a hot dog. They are in a different place. They are like in another space and um, time and that's the power of live music and you know everyone who loves live music that's why they go do you have certain shows that you feel like oh my god that was a 12 or it's usually dependent on the the reaction of the audience which is a bit unfair yeah you can't take it personally if people aren't like dancing around you know twelve thousand people aren't dancing on a sunday night <laughs> you know it doesn't make you a ter terrible it's terrible show it just means that um that song didn't do it for them to make them get <laughs> up and do that i just want people to have an amazing time and 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 just get lost in music because people have so many choices right the worst idea that someone comes and then you suck you know you let someone <laughs> yeah. down like it's funny because when i had kids they'd say have you written any kids songs about your kids you know and you're is this if you start writing songs about, i was like god no <laughs> terrible idea for me so I said, all I do is, but I do write songs that I don't want them to suck because I want my kids to be able to, my son, my eldest son, Kingston, he's about to start another band. He's a great songwriter. I, I need to make records that he plays in front of his friends or come on and don't suck. Mm -hmm. They can't <laughs> suck. Right. Because that reason, I can't have that. They can't be sort of, they can't lose the vitality. They can't be off the boil. They can't be sort of phoned in. They have to be vital. And I think that's why it keeps getting heavier and heavier because it's just a, it just keeps me vital. 
What is your son's music like? Really melodic, excellent melodic, um, kind of like alternative, Pumpkins, Deftonesy, um, is his. Those are his favorite bands, and has a beautiful sense of melody, and his voice in, improves in every recording. Really, a lot. He's. It's like he legitimately could do it as his job if he wanted to. It's not like when I began. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, the songs I began with, you know, try to listen to those first six songs. Someone would pat me on the head and be like, oh, right, well, <laughs> hope you can paint better than you can sing. <laughs> so uh, he's, it, he, I'm already blown away by that. Yeah, my, my. I Is mean, he a but, guitar player as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a lovely feel. He's he's very cool. And it's, 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 it's interesting because um, anthropologically, it's correct that he's breaking away from me. And so he does it not by sitting me, hey, dad, show me this, show me that. It's by just coming back with, oh, I did this. I did this song. I did that. Oh, mm. Okay, that's cool. You know, oh, I learned this. And it's much more impressive. And I've been waiting. Every parent just waits for their kid to get the bug to do something that inspires them. Mm -hmm. And you just sit in there waiting, you know. And uh, so the fact that he has that as a um, really healthy pastime and use of his brain is really impressive. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? What a great area is downtown here in Los Angeles. This whole arts district. Amazing. Lovely. Amazing. It's a very nice studio. Yeah, it's great. Have you been in the recording? Have you been down here before? No, no, no. I'm just I'm one of the worker bees. I'm just on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have this incredible like recording studio here too. Right. Well, I'm it's sure. Didn't they try to have a label and stuff like that? I'm not sure. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, how's Marvin doing? He's doing great, man. It's awesome. One of the most personal things that I've done. You know, it has my name on it. So, um, but uh, reception has been great, man. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks I really appreciate me. it, Gavin. Yeah. Appreciate it.